Imagine what would happen if everybody on your team came to work every day with a massive amount of passion and energy. I've been helping to build high performance organizations and teams for over a dozen years and I'm about to share with you the most valuable and important and simple techniques that I've learned about how to create motivation, how to engage your staff, how to motivate your employees, and just how to make work more fun and enjoyable every single day. Now the first thing I'm going to share is something I've shared in some of my other videos, which is don't use money. That's right. Money is not a motivator. It's what we call a demotivator. And this is something I actually learned way back in college, but it's proven true time and time again. So if people don't make enough money, then they will end up not being motivated. They're going to say, I don't make enough money and I deserve more. So you should give me more and I won't produce enough because I'm not making enough money. But most people, for the long term, they don't say, hey, I'm making a whole lot more money, I should do a whole lot more work. They just think they're getting compensated fairly if they make at that level or above. Money can actually hinder innovation. When you try to use money as a reward system, what happens is people latch on to that end result and they're so worried about not achieving that that their brain locks on and it doesn't branch out into all the different directions. There's actually been numerous experiments that show this uh, using candles and, and matchsticks and uh, about how a larger reward actually limits your creativity. So tip number one for what not to do is don't use money to try to motivate people. It's not going to work. Tip number two is actually related to what I was just talking about with fear. Don't use fear or threats to try to motivate your people. Maybe you get a short term uh, increase in your productivity, but they're going to have resentment and more than likely you're actually going to have an immediate downturn in your productivity. Now I can tell you a great story about this from real life experience. I was working at a startup and this was actually what drove me into um, ultimately making the decision to go into my own business. And I didn't know at the time, but when I uh, got recruited, the startup had actually been around for nine years. So that tells you something uh, was going on. But what I found out uh, as I dug in was that our code was actually not in very good shape. This happened to be a software company. And we even had interns coming up saying, hey, your code is not very good. So I listened to the teams. I got everybody together and I said, all right, we need to come up with a long-term way to solve this problem. And everybody got excited. We started talking about it. We got everybody to come on site. We did a week long um, brainstorming session. We came up with this entire plan. It was gonna be about a six month plan, but everything was gonna be awesome at the end of that. What happened was on actually the last day of that session, the CEO told the overarching manager of the organization that we had one month to release the product or everybody's work from home contracts were done or everybody was gonna get fired. Basically bad stuff was gonna happen if we didn't launch this product right away. The organization had nine years of bad code and he wanted everybody to solve it in a month. Now maybe there was uh, some logic in the idea that, well, we just need to get a version out. We don't need to spend as much time revamping the whole system. And tell me in the comments below, what do you think? What do you think happened to the productivity? Do you think it went up? Do you think it went up a little bit and went down? How much do you think it went up? 10%, 20%, 30%, 50%? I'll tell you what, the answer, productivity went to zero. Absolute zero. And I measured that, I literally made a chart. And I told management when they tried to do this right away, I said, this is a bad idea. This is gonna destroy everything. I didn't know how much. And what happened was, every time the team would fix one bug, they would create one or two new ones. And so literally our bug chart, we had started fixing a lot of stuff and all of a sudden it just went flat and it just stayed flat. Every week I would send a report, hey, our bug, our bug fixes are flat. We need to lift this, uh, we need to lift this uh, mandate. We need to lift this threat. We need to get rid of that. Immediately, the day that they lifted that mandate and that threat, productivity started rising and our bug count started going down. I was absolutely shocked at how powerful this was. But the point is, don't use fear to try to manage your people. It's just not going to work. A quick question for you before we get into my tips on motivation. Motivation is not about money. We said that in part one. But if it's not for you, what drives you? What is it that motivates you? And the reason that I'm asking this question is my hope is that as you put down the things that drive you, 
other people that are in management or on your team or whoever else, they're gonna see this and they're gonna look at the comments and they're gonna say, wow, look at all these things that motivate people. And they're gonna start understanding how they shouldn't try to use money in fear to work with you. And hopefully, by sharing that information, we're gonna make the world a better place. So I'm doing the hard part here. All you gotta do is drop your note in the comments below. So let's get on with the tips. And the first thing I'm gonna share with you is that motivation is not something that you can build in people. People are inherently motivated. Everybody has something that they want, and it's all based on our past experiences and our emotions. We are emotionally driven creatures. So if you want somebody to show more motivation, you just have to help them connect whatever it is that result that you're trying to get to that emotion, to that thing that drives them to their natural motivations. And that differs a little bit for everybody. Everybody has a little bit different things that motivate them, that they're trying to strive for, that they want to achieve in life, the things that make them happy. But there's also some things that connect us that pretty much motivate everybody in the human race. And one of those things is purpose. Purpose gives us so many things that tap into our core motivations as people. One of those is it gives us a sense of importance. When we're contributing to that purpose, we feel important. We feel like we're doing something valuable and that is naturally wired into our DNA. It's part of what drives us as human beings. It's why we are where we are today and why we aren't still back in the stone age. It also gives us a sense of connection because when you have a purpose and I have that same purpose, all of a sudden we're part of a group. And when we're part of a group, we feel better about ourselves. It's again wired into our DNA and who we are. So how do we actually leverage this? How do, what do we specifically do in order to create that sense of belonging, connection, and importance? Well, one thing is the vision and the mission of the organization. If you're at the top level management, that's your job is to create a good vision and mission. And I have a whole nother video that explains more about doing that. One thing you can do is help people see the value of whatever they're doing. Have you ever had somebody come up and tell you how important your work is or how valuable your work is to them? I've had that happen a number of times, actually with some of these videos. I, I did a webinar a few weeks ago and people told me this was gonna change their life. And guess what that did for my motivation? Through the roof. I'm like, yeah, let me do 10 more. Let me do videos. Let me start a whole webinar series. I'm, I'm talking, I'm already looking at hiring more people to do my video editing so I can get videos out every day, right? I wanna do more because I know I feel good about that value. So one of the things you can do, no matter where you are in the organization or in life or in your family or in your relationships, is you can tell people personally how their work helps you. And this is great if you are uh, also, if you have a, a conflict with somebody, instead of going to them and saying, hey, I have this problem, whatever, you can actually use a, uh, flip this around and say, your work is really great. I love that you're providing this value. This would make it even more valuable for me. And don't, don't lie, don't, you know, if you don't really believe that, don't say it, but you can find whatever value they're creating and emphasize that. And that is actually gonna help you get more of those results that you want. Another very simple technique is creating short-term and long-term goals. So when I create a video, right, I might say, hey, I wanna create a video with this title so that I help people in this way. My mission, I actually wake up every morning and read my purpose statement to myself along with this entire formula that, I, that I've put together. I remind myself why I'm doing the things that I'm doing. I set goals for the day and I talk about why I'm gonna do those. I tell myself, this is why you're doing that. And that gets me just geared up. It gets me amped for the day. It gets me rolling. And I, I tell you what, since I've started doing that, I probably get two, three more times done in a day than I used to. And it doesn't even feel like work anymore. It feels fun. It feels, I feel energy. I feel excitement. So short-term and long-term goals can be a very, very powerful method to use. And again, you can use those anywhere. You can set those with other teammates, with family members, with friends, with your, if you're a CEO, if you're an executive, if you're a C-suite, doesn't matter, you can use this. And the last thing I'll share with you on this tip is you can use things like impact mapping. Now, impact mapping is a really cool tool. You start off figuring out what goal you want, then you figure out who, um, who you need to get to take certain actions to achieve it and then what actions you need to get them to take. And the core of that is actually figuring out what it is that you're trying to achieve. And that process of figuring out specifically what do I need to achieve helps to build that sense of purpose and importance. 
It helps to give clarity around what you're doing and then you measure the results as you go and measuring those results, those metrics and seeing progress happens helps to build that sense of importance. So let's move on to the next tip and that is connect to people's personal goals. Doesn't have to necessarily be professional. In fact, I would do both. I would do professional and personal. And there's a few reasons for this. Number one, you're gonna be way more likely to go the extra mile for somebody who cares about your well-being. And it shows that you care about somebody's well-being when you ask them what they want to achieve. This is the first step that I do with every single new team that I work with, every new client that I work with. Uh, people that I meet, I often just ask them, hey, you know, what do you want? Now, I wouldn't just be necessarily walking down the street, hey, what do you want out of life? It's kind of a little bit, you know, uh, maybe a little bit invasive, but, uh, you know, within the first like week or so of coming uh, on board with a new team or a new client, I'm asking them. Actually, with a new client, that's literally the first thing I say when I'm on a, well, it's within the first minute or two on the phone call, I say, hey, what is it that you want? What am I trying to help you achieve here? And it shows that you, you care about them. It also helps you understand their real, true, core motivations. That's because, again, people aren't motivated by money. Money is a means. Money is a way to achieve an emotion. Even people that really do want money, and it's like they think that's their ultimate goal, they don't. They want the money because it creates an emotion. They want that emotion. We are emotionally driven people. So asking people, what do you want, builds that sense of connection. It builds that sense that you care about them, and it helps you understand what they're really getting to because you have to dive deep. You can't just ask on the surface because most people won't tell you what they really want when you first start out of the gate. Some people will if you have a lot of trust built up with them, but a lot of people don't even know. So you actually have to do some digging and that's where it helps to have a coach or have some experience in this. But even if you don't have experience, you can make really great progress just by asking people and trying to dive deeper and then asking them, well, why do you want that? Well, why do you want that? And if you use five whys, you're generally gonna get to a pretty solid answer. Now, you can do this in a couple of ways, and one is a one-on-one -on -one meeting or one-on-one -on -one conversation. Those are, those are really great, but I almost always use a one-on-one -on -one conversation and then have a team conversation when I'm working with an organization or with a team. And there's a lot of reasons for this. One is, again, it's gonna, as you ask everybody, what do you want as a group, you're gonna start to build that connection, which is something that people want at a core level. And so you're gonna build a stronger team just by putting everybody in the room and asking them, hey, what do you guys want? Now, here's how I specifically do this in a team environment, especially in a work environment. I'll say, one, what do you want personally? And I'll get everybody to go around the room. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll do what do you want personally and what do you want professionally? And I'll say, give me your top one, maybe two each if you really can't pick one, but just tell me the top thing that you want. And it's not important to get everything up there. It's just important to start building this connection and start to understand these things. And so everybody will say, well, you know, on a personal level, uh, I've had people say, you know, I just want to get uh, my kid to the next grade. I want to spend more time with my family. I want to vacation. I want a bigger house, you know, whatever that is. And number two, you, you know, what are your professional goals? Well, I want to move up to the next level job. A lot of people say, I want to spend more time with my family. Um, you know, I want to be independently wealthy, whatever that might be. And then I say, all right, how would doing these practices support your personal and professional goals? And you start to see these, aha, these light bulbs go off, right? And it completely changes people in an instant. Guys, this is a one hour meeting at, you know, you don't, you don't even have to spend that long, but typically I'd give it an hour sit down with your team, have this conversation, and you don't have to be the manager. You can do this from any level. You can sit down with your team uh, or people you work with or with yourself. You can do it with your family. You can do it with anybody. Try it. See what happens. You're going to find amazing results. I actually give you one more quick story. And there was a team I was working with at a large organization, a financial institution. And this team was just not engaging. We would do what we call a retrospective. And that's where we sit down and just talk about what could we do better and the team would just sit with these like blank stares and you could tell they didn't really want to be there they didn't understand why we were there and as i dug in they just said you know look we tried stuff it doesn't really work but generally i couldn't get anything out of them at all they just wouldn't speak they wouldn't speak up they wouldn't share and we did this exercise and that team came alive they woke up and they started throwing out all these crazy ideas and in a few weeks 
We had completely changed our process around. We cut our delivery times by about 40%. Yeah, in a matter of weeks, we cut down our, our delivery times dramatically. And the team, they, they bonded and they connected with me and we just grew stronger together. And on that note, folks, I have a small ask for you. And that is, if you enjoyed this video, you know how to hit the like and subscribe buttons. I always ask about that, but I want you to do something else with this one. If you enjoyed this, if you connected with this video, share this out, send it to other people, drop it in the comments. Look, the more you engage with this video, the more you engage with this content, the higher it's gonna rank on YouTube and the more people are gonna see it. And together, we can help to shift the way that we look at things. We can help get away from that fear and that money-driven culture. We can help build a new culture and I'm doing the hard part. I'm spending the time, the money, the effort to put all this together. All I'm asking you to do is, you know, hit those share buttons, send this out, get it to as many people as possible, drop it on social media, drop it on Twitter. It only takes a couple clicks and a few seconds, but you can help all of us out. You can help the whole world out tremendously just by doing that. So I'll go ahead and throw some other videos up on the screen for you to check out. And until next time, thanks for watching.